All right, welcome back to the Rising Empires League Division Two, and we've got Team Seven Town Center Giga Chads, also seven known as Seven TCGC, spawning here at the lower side of the pit in their game number two of the Play All Three series with Pleco, the red trunks on the English, only cams in the pink trunks on the Ottomans. So, this is pretty similar comp to what we saw these guys use last game, except it was French Ottoman rather than English Ottoman. Opponents today, we've got Alucar in the yellow on Malians. Really cool sieve to look at. It's going to cost you to actually delete that to put a building there. Nah, just kidding. It's one of those little doodads that gets placed whenever... You've got buildings nearby. So, his, his ally today on Team Real is Vortex. He's from English in the light blue. So, we got Marlene's English versus Ottomans English. Last game, we had Ottomans French versus English French. So, it seems to be a thing of two players, well a player from each team plays the same civilization and a player from each team plays a different civilization. So our Ottomans player, be eager to try and make use of the military school. Really nice those free units that you get out of those. The cams did a great job with the Ottomans in the last game. Pleco with a switch from French to English. Alucar actually stepping in for his teammate who was uh, Altair. So he's stepping in for a teammate that was playing uh, French last game while Vortex on English once again. And yeah, the pit, it's a funny map. It can be very, very brutal. Or very, very long, considering there's often not a lot of resources on our, each side of the map. And control of the map can be quite difficult. So it's not the hardest map in the world to try and wall up. Or at least it's not when you haven't got this, you know, several thousand mile long gap between your town centre and between the start of the cliff face. And yeah, players. The food, they're going to have to try and venture out towards the center of the map to try and get a hold of food and gold here. Even wood is going to be a little bit limited as the game goes on. You sort of got one small clump of trees and then a massive one over at the back of the base. But even then, it will not last forever. Can you hear different sounds at different heights? Yeah, you can. That's cool. Listen to that, guys. That's called immersion and shit, bro. So we've got Council Hall here. Pleco looking to put pressure on with his archers. Stable here for Alucard. He'll be wanting to get uh, Warrior Scouts. After having opened with Mansa Quarry, a nice gold trickle landmark that you can actually swap to Stone Trickle instead. We've got Council Hall for Vortex Reload, a little bit slower than the one for Royal Pleco. Well, only counts. One for Twin Minaret Madris once again. Going for a military school. Just gonna switch to meta training, cancel the spearmen completely. So, it'll be a little while before that meta is out. But he's going to add another 
military school, and then probably a blacksmith. Man, Ottomans are a cool sieve. Ottomans and Mali are just so good at harassing people to death. It's, un it's unbelievable how good they are at it. Warrior scouts in particular, very versatile. Quick health regeneration. Like Smith for only cams. Gonna benefit both of these. Military schools, no doubt. Couple of scouts heading in, just in time to try and disrupt one of these buildings, if not both of them going up here. With that many villagers rallied, the scouts can't stick around, it is costing a bit of gathering time by this happening though. So both the military schools getting a big boost to their train speed now. One of the scouts completely surrounded and he's stuck. The two scouts are going to be able to just hightail it out of there. You can actually take reasonable fights even against the longbows. But this one here probably needs to back out. So Alucard doing a good job of trying to focus down Pleco's archers there. So we've just got bulk Sipahi production here at the moment from only cams. Alucar stealing the hunt. He's got four of the deer on the back of the uh, scouts. This actually slows them down pretty substantially. Only back at uh, 1.22 movement speed as opposed to the normal 1.62, which puts them. Really only slightly faster than the infantry while they carry. But even still, it's really nice for Marlians because I can just come and chuck it all straight under the town center. Relish in not only having a boosted food eco of their own, but also denying their opponents the ability to gather from the quickest food sources. Pleco just venturing out on the map now. Checking to see if his opponent's not stealing the hunt over here. But Alucar and Vortex eager to keep applying some pressure to Pleco, who's taking the second town center rather than going straight to age three. Only camps. He brought his Imams here as well. Still just spamming out free Sipahi. We've also got a couple of extra rangers now. Four only camps. Well, Pleco, some nice control on the archers, working away at Vortex's archers now. Now an army of mostly warrior scouts and longbows is forced to back it up a little bit. The warrior scouts coming in hot. Trying to beeline on towards the longbows above the regular archers, but bearing in mind these regular archers are also attacking 15% faster and do have a healing source, so probably is advisable to just clean up the bowmen first. So it looks like Alucar having a retreat. The safety of Vortex's forward outpost there. Do like this is very smart, walling yourself in. But at the same time, as soon as you chop down these trees here, you're going to have to replace that wall, basically. In fact, he's brought over the villagers a little bit slow there. So he's going to replace that segment of wall. Alucar looking to wall this up. And he comes, starting to push forward a little bit. Just zoning off his opponent wants easy control of this gold mine. Fleco in the meanwhile, moving up with his longbows. 
Oh, and the villager is on the wrong side of the tower, and she will get picked off with 30 health left to go. So that's really rough for Vortex. In fact, he's going to want to cancel this tower immediately now, because otherwise he's not going to get back any resources if it just gets destroyed. And he doesn't have another villager heading over to try and... Oh, he's got one now to try and replace it, but the longer he lets this get taken down, the less value it's going to be if he does cancel it when he does. He's also got a couple of straggler units being produced that are overextending a little bit here. He's able to bring them back in time that time. Did lose one, but no more. Now this is an interesting generation of the cliff here. Because, you know, you've got your dip down in the center of the map here, but you've actually got one dip down to the outside of the map here. It's not so common. Something like that should be an English player's paradise. So, a third military school being built for only camps. He would have taken a Vizier power to be able to get a third one here. Because you can only get one in age one, one from age two onwards, and then one in age two if you take military campus. I don't believe you can get a fourth. But when you take your castle age, you can actually get the, um... What's it called? Oh no, it's not actually in range of the blacksmith, is it? Oh, you're gonna probably put another blacksmith down, so then you can put the Memed Imperial Academy. That's what it's called. Down next to it anyway. Read the benefit of reduced, uh, train time on both of those as well. All for just having a smart base layout. Alicar looks to be trying to get a castle age here. In fact, oh, he's actually just going for triple, triple market early on. He's trading to the neutral market over there, but only Cam's is eager to try and punish him early on. Well, Pleco finding out that he's actually. Not able to get through those walls. And he's actually going to try and wrap around and attack up the center of the map. And he comes backing out against Vortex, although he's realizing he does have a small opportunity to get some damage done. Warrior Scouts now engaging. So Donso being focused down by only cams, but. Longbow is focusing down the archers. Only car out of Donso other than that one left there. So these guys pretty much just an empowered spearman. Vortex trying to wall in only cams here. Not quite successful. Pleco, a little caught out in a sense that he was trying to march up the center of the map after trying to march up the left side of the map and now he's having to assist his ally. A little slow here, he has got Castle Age finished now though and only Cam's is taking Castle now. Alokar and Vortex are still some way off getting Castle Age themselves. Did you say something about a porno? Pleco. Now attempt to push up the center of the map once again. I've got to snipe this sofa. Okay, hitting Castle Age now. Vortex walling and taking Castle himself. So he is going to go for a King's Palace. And he has the one town center other than that one, so a nice little boost to his macro. But Alucard's committed to three markets, but isn't able to maintain triple market production here. He probably would have been best off only getting one 
mark it to start with, and then just constantly having caravan queued up out of it. Or maybe even two, but you know, when you can try and minimize the number of buildings you've got as repeats, uh, unless you're really going to use them. So Cam's taking out the gate, worth a little bit more than the rest of the wall off. On top of that, you know, your opponent's got to then replace the wall and then replace the gate. He's just backing off for the time being, he and Pleco. We'll be taking a couple of upgrades. Everyone's through to Castle Age now. The King's Palace there for Vortex. It'll be Farimba Garrison here for Alucard. So really nice uh, savings for his economy. For units produced out of here, they come out in batches of five. Uh, train a little bit faster than what it would take to train five units. And they come at a discount. Though it's only 10%, it used to be 20%, I believe. And all the entire unit cost is just in gold rather than in a mix of resources. So Vortex is getting ready to push here. At the same time, you can see the opponents snaking their way up the center of the map. So these gold gatherers happen to be retreated. Probably have to come over here to get some gold. So Camus and Pleco pushing together. Alika and Vorte Vortex trying to find opportunity to take a good fight here. Longbows especially handy against this uh, Malian army, considering it's mostly in light armoured units on the sofa pretty much. Vortex trying to take an engagement now. On the car coming in to back him up and tie up all these man at arms. Pleco with the back for the bulk of the backline damage. And only cams the bulk of the frontline damage for Team 7 TC GC. It looks like Team Real has actually managed to clean up the front line of 7 TC GC here. So our red and our pink player forced to retreat for now. We've got the two middle scores on Team Real, the highest and the lowest score on Team 7 TC at the moment. And the cam's committing to the one market. He's got four over here. Which again, I think is a little bit wasteful unless he can afford to spam out of four or five markets at once. Because every resource you spend building buildings is resources you can't spend producing from buildings. So if you're not able to actually constantly produce 100% of the time out of every building you've got, then you've got too many buildings. But Pleco, seemingly turning things around here. Vortex was going to try and go for a forward tower, but Pleco is going to beat him 2-1 on the center of the map here. It's funny in a way, and new cams sort of made sure that his team actually has less overall map space here, but at the same time, looks like he's still willing to gather outside of that uh, safe map space. Pleco's actually got a lot of anti-heavy armor and a lot of heavy armor units here, while Musa Fadi as the uh, Malian equivalent to Man at Arms are actually a light unit that counters heavy armored units specifically. So this is probably one of the uh, more anti-heavy armor and heavy armor comps that you will see played against Mali. The days of people just spamming knights into all matchups and all situations are over thanks to 
everyone's favourite African civilization. They're also the only African civilization in the game so far. Does that also mean that they're everyone's least favourite African civilization? So Vortex and Alucard pushing forward. Want to try and get back control of this sacred site. Cam's evacuating with that relic as well. Well, he probably needs to join in the fight here. He is waiting for Pleco to fall back a little bit. Kind of waiting for Team Real to take the bait. I think. The Manganel there, it should be quite tough for these two mostly infantry unit compositions to deal with. Kems is even going to try pressuring the wall there. He's going to make a trap behind the wall. All these guys benefiting from that attack speed boost as well. But only Kems is playing so defensively with his army here. He's not properly backing up Pleco at the moment, but here we go, now he is. And now, now the Manganel, as soon as I say that, actually is put well at risk here and is probably going to fall soon. Not before it gets a couple of nice shots off on the range back line there of uh, Vortex. And he does still have another one. And bearing in mind as Ottoman, he will have that Mehmet Academy, uh, Armory, sorry. So he is making these for free every, what, two minutes? He gets a free mangonel, which is pretty massive. Now there's a hole in the gate here. Vortex going to lose his monk and control of his sacred site. Flacco still coming forward. And only camps again. A lot of army here. Into assist that is just sort of sitting idle, but for the time being... Pleco is fine just to take the trades. And the Manganel's still getting off reasonable damage. So Cam's just making sure he gets this uh, sacred site denied, and in fact, he can try and pressure this gold mine next. I think that is probably going to be the idea. Oh no, he's going to just come and support the army. Take out that one last outpost, make it harder for the opponents to know just how much shit's heading up the center of the map. look like anyone's going to Imperial here. No one can afford to. They're all just committing to these big fights. Vortex still has a scary amount of range here, so he and Pleco are just constantly doing the dance here. But Pleco's now added a Manganel of his own, which will benefit from that Network of Castles upgrade. Whereas the uh, Manganels for only camps haven't so far. So these guys can actually get on either of these sacred sites if they wanted. Surprised that um, only Cams didn't finish off this outpost and come over here and try and check this gold mine. See what was on it because right now I think that's the bulk of Vortex's uh, gold economy. He's just started on his caravan eco now as well but it's a little bit slower than uh, Alucars. Who's, you know, he's on three markets over there. And again, I think he's sort of over-invested in the markets. Even even only Cams are somewhat over-invested in markets here. Because, you know, unless you're going to spam five caravans out at a time for a couple of minutes, you're not really actually going to get the full benefit of having five markets. You know, other than the fact that when your opponent does break in, it's going to take them longer to destroy the buildings. But if they're broken in and they're destroying the markets, chances are you, you're going to lose all of them. Only Cam's taking Imperial now. And he and Pleco trying to push into Vortex at the moment. Vortex and Alucar, Team Real, trying to hold off as best they can. Because as long as they can keep this market alive, the market line alive, sorry, they can keep producing. They get pushed in to the point where traders are being singled out, then I think it's pretty much over here. So Cam's 
is taking the second sacred site there. Not worrying about the third one just yet. There's still a couple more relics for him to grab as well. All that uh, manganel being picked off. Another one is going to be picked off here as well. And he came to little, oh, little soda micro that one back, but at the same time, he is able to take out all of the sofa there. So ends up being worthwhile for him and Pleco. A rough trade for Alucard, who's just trying to mass up enough forces that he can support uh, Vortex here. This is what I was talking about. The longbow is now making it through to where the market line, market route is. And all these traders carrying 190 gold at once are being taken down. Really rough for Alucard especially because it means he can no longer just spam units out of the Farimba garrison as easily. Which slows down his economy substantially. I mean slows down his military production substantially. Oh and it's a bit of a gift and a curse fighting in a choke like this because... The um, Manganel is able to get some really nice splash attacks off there. Deal a lot of area damage. And Pleco looks like his army outnumbers both of his opponents here. Although a Manganel there from Alukai is forcing these guys to have to stand in a scattered, staggered formation. Vortex trying to put a keep on his market line now because he knows it's mission critical a forward Berkshire Palace here so these have a slightly longer range than a regular keep in fact if we go to the keep yeah it's got almost double the range of a regular keep it's going to be especially powerful as an offensive keep, like, look at that, that's ridiculous, that's disgusting. Is this balanced? Who balanced English? You can almost hit that thing. So Vortex tapping out there, and GG7 Town Center Giga Chads take the game.